speeds. Speed one. Speed two. Speed three. Consulta is it consultation? Salutations. Salutations. Damn. That's good for me. No, That's man, I messed that one up. I'm not feeling it now. You guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Today we have everybody's favorite brand. Why do we know it's everybody's favorite brand? Because it gets the most traffic. Milwaukee from where? Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, wait, Milwaukee. Wait, I oh, Milwaukee, oh, Tennessee. I got it now. Well, now I get actually, it. they probably do have a manufacturing plant. No, not Tennessee, Mississippi. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mississippi. Uh, you guys, Milwaukee Tool, owned by a company called TTI. Uh, they also own Ryobi Rigid, and they also own Milwaukee, but Milwaukee has its own separate headquarters, which is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and they're constantly expanding, adding new people, which means they are obviously doing really good in the tool world. So to do good in the tool world, you need to produce a good tool, right? Correct. And they do. And not only that, is they produce probably more 18, are they the biggest 18 volt on it now? Well, Makita used to be. Makita and them are, but one's based off of like the model numbers, you know. Oh. One's based off of, I think, the actual type of tools, so I don't know really how the, the rundown goes for that. But I do know, though, I've been tearing my house apart, and I am loving Milwaukee. And contractors love Milwaukee. I mean, like the electricians? Day, yeah. Like, so I built stairs, built brand new stairs going on. I'm like, oh man, I, I got to uh, sand them. I'm like, I don't want to get the extension cord to sand. I'm like, oh, you know, I got the Milwaukee sander. Well, I've got it. But I've been using the radio. Oh, the palm? Using, is the palm, the palm sander? Yeah. The ro no, uh, orbital. Orbital? Oh, wow. Well. But I've been using all their cordless stuff, and I realized, wow, it's you can really make a, truly make a cordless uh, job set now, you know? Well, they've been saying that for years. Yeah, but you know what? It's nice to actually see it. You know, like the only thing like I well, really now you can have a true corded Milwaukee job right now. Exactly. Because they have a yeah. table saw. Because they've got and... so many different things. It's not you're not going from the wall, Bosch, Milwaukee. You're not going to all these different ones. You got one one battery platform. Right, and that's the thing we always tell you guys. That's what we're always talking about. You know, it's like this tool right here. Even if it was the most powerful in its class, the greatest, latest and greatest. If you're a Dewalt guy, you're not going to get this tool. If you're a you know. Makita guy, you're not going to get this tool. You know, if you're a Royobi guy, you're not going to get this tool. But it's like, they're just so, you know, basically they want to get you into the line, right? Once you're into the line, once they've got you on that Kool-Aid, you're in, right? So what if is you, it, line sink and hook or something like that? Or, you know what I'm saying? Line hook and sinker. Something like that. I don't know is it line hook and sinker? I don't even think. I don't know what a sinker is. But pretty much, you guys, if you're already in the Milwaukee line, obviously staying with Milwaukee Tools is a no-brainer, right? I mean, you don't want to be that guy on a job site that has six different tool brands that, oh, man, I only have two DeWalt batteries, one Milwaukee battery, and a Bosch battery. And you're the guy taking up all the outlet totals because of your charger. Exactly, you know? right? Yeah. With Milwaukee, you just have that one brand, that one charger, and you probably are buying kits. And when you buy a kit, it comes with one, two batteries. You can even get bare tools. But I mean, that's kind of what sells you on the tools, right? It's just staying mm -hmm. in there. And it's good to be solid into a brand that is actually constantly, uh, you know... Uh, Upgrading, uh, yeah. making more powerful tools, making more compact, making a variety of tools. That's also a bad thing too, though, because it makes you jealous. Because it's like, if, if I just bought this, like I guarantee you right now, this is their latest and greatest mid-torque impact. This is 2018. At the end of 2019, 2020, there's going to be a Gen 3 or... There will, but I don't think most guys are going to upgrade, really, unless they need a new tool or something like that, or they're brand new to the market. I mean, right. I know someone no. like you, you're the guy who needs a new iPhone every six months, but I'm still like an iPhone 3. You know what I mean? I hate iPhones, too. I'm like stuck I did, too, but what else are you going to do? My iPhone 10 is the worst phone I've ever had, you guys. It's the th if you ever no, see our video, and it's shaky, it's because of the iPhone 10. And you know what I've noticed? This is definitely not even close to being a job site phone. Not, and I know they don't count it to. Yeah. I don't. But every time, like, you're just sweating, you got a little bit of moisture in your hand, I can't open this phone whatsoever. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt, man. I suck. Yeah. Apple, you suck. But it's better than the Android one, so. Yes. But, but if tool companies have tried to make phones, like, they want me to phone it, it kind of sucks. But it's based off of Android. It's still a guy who's based off of Android or Apple, though. Yeah. 
What up, you guys? This is Tools in Action. We talk about random things. If you guys are sitting in your mom's basement and you need the exact specs, you know where to go. Obviously not here. Um, so this is their mid-torque impact, right? Would this be considered Gen 2? Or is this Gen 3? No, it's Gen 2. I'm pretty sure it's Gen 2. I mean, I don't know. It's your newest one. Whether it's Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, whatever. Right. This one, you guys, has a friction ring they do on have it. An anvil. Yeah, they do have or an anvil. Pin, also, pin, pin detent. detent. So the pin detent, what it's going to do is, if you've ever had those sockets, this one doesn't have it with the hole in it. That's when the pin detent's going to come in handy. And that's for when you're doing production work, stuff like that. Well, you don't need to be changing the socket. Yeah, know? that constantly. Because you're going to have to use a pin to actually remove that pin detent. So the friction ring works pretty good. Uh, Five-year warranty with Milwaukee, which is pretty good. Three on battery. And three on the battery, and it's a three speed impact. I didn't notice too much difference in the speeds between two and three, Eric. Because it's only 3,000. I mean, 300. It's only 300 yeah, okay. RPMs. Difference. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's such a different kind of RPM range. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Why would you need, I mean, is there an actual task at hand that would need that extra 300? Because me personally, when I'm running legs, I'm on speed three. I always want to be a speed three. It, maybe is it more torquey on speed two with less. Well, I would think one, when you get less RPMs, you have more torque. When you got more speed, you got less torque. Right. You know, well, one, on this was, one on this was very, um, you know, slow. Well, I think that's if you're going to be busting off a nut or something like that, you know. I don't think so. Are you serious? Well, yeah. I mean, everything basically, usually the more speed, it's kind of like even a saw. The more speed you have, the less torque you have. The less speed you have, the more torque. Kind of like a uh, um, worm drive as opposed to an inline drive. You know. Yeah. Well, no. Just because when I saw you, like, you know, when we were using it, it was just it didn't seem to be too, uh, like, cranking it down like it was on speed three. No. It's, yeah, because speed three is a lot faster. I know. Okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. Well, we're doing impact lags. We weren't busting off like a nut or mm -hmm. something. You know. So you're saying if you went to bust off a nut, you would put it in speed one. I mean, I would still keep it on three. See, I, if I, three didn't work, then I would just throw it on one, yeah. I thought one would be more for, like, controllability. Like, well, okay, I'm sure it I'm is, like, too. You know, an inch away, or i got to be perfect with this. No. Cheat, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, Ooh, I like the sound effects, man. Yeah, I know. Dude, I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm starting to learn better tools. You're like that guy from the police academy. Yeah. I don't know. So when our sound goes out, you hear it. Would yeah, it'd be it's funny, in the background. If we did that, we should do that one time, yeah. right? i got to cover it up and then do, like, a sound effect on it. Um, so you guys, mid-torque, what does that mean? It's not their most powerful and it's not their most compact. It's right in the middle, in between. Uh, we did take some lugs off a trailer with it, no problem. Um, you threw some lag screws in, it worked pretty good, you know. The only reason why you would need the more compact one is if you have, you know, you're doing smaller lags, you're doing a lot of work, and, you know, you want tighter that spaces, lightweight, yeah. yeah, tighter spaces. Or if you want the heavier one, you're doing heavier work. So, and I think that the mid range is probably one of the better sellers. I would think. I do. I like that. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think I think this thing's awesome because to me that's still compact compared to a lot of the stuff out there. When you consider the power ratio that thing has, power to weight or power to size. Yeah. Was it six hundred? Six hundred foot pounds, foot pounds of torque, of torque that's taking off and four hundred fifty fastening. Now is it always in reverse, full torque off? Is what? So it's always in full torque. What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. Well, let's go back to my other question. The one, two, three speed. So it's always got that same torque throughout all the speed. It's got different impacts, different speeds. I don't know. You know what I'm going to say next. Yeah, let's start over. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, listen, we're just here showing you these tools off, man. Like Dan was saying, listen, oh, if you're in your mom's basement and you want the actual specs, we can read them off the box, Dan can put them below, or you can go to their site. It's not a complicated thing. We're here to show you this tool, and that's it, man. We're not going to know every little thing about it, and I have no desire to know every little thing about it. Wow. You know, I don't. I just like seeing cool tools, man, cool different things. I love how Milwaukee's able to take a tool Make it smaller with technology. Make it run longer with a good battery platform to it. And I just think that's cool. It's cool to see that happen. You know? So, that's my story. I'm sticking to it, man. No, Eric, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You guys, bottom line is we're just two guys in the garage. Eric's right. We're showing you the tool. What do you guys think, right? If I walked out to a job site and had two of these next to each other and one had 600 nut-busting torque pounds, one had 500, would you really notice the difference? You know what I'm saying? On certain applications, I think with the tools, a lot of it's your majority. You know, it's kind of like we talked about with the impact drivers. You know, it's nice to have, um, what do they call that? 
When you can select, you can set the whole drive system. Clutch? No, no, no. Like, you know how Milwaukee, you can go into the phone. One key. One key, yeah. I mean, like, again, I think that's for certain applications, too. I think, you know. Right. And I, I agree with him. I mean, one key, like I said, most, like, guys are not going to need one key, especially the old school guys that are like, you know what, I can use my finger to adjust torque. But if you're doing production work, stuff like that, or theft management, I mean, one key really comes into play. Yeah. One key comes into play on that. Obviously, this is not a one key version. Do you think they're going to make a one key version? I think it would be helpful. You think? Yeah, because I think certain guys are going to, you know, I think there's that wonder, find that, you know. I wonder how hard it is to make it one key. I would have to just think a little chip or something in there. I yeah. Don't know. What if it was like, you know, like a car, like where it's already built in, but they just have to turn it on. So you can just call up, pay a hundred bucks, and oh yeah, we'll turn on one key for you. That's how you should do it. No. You should, you know, I, I think if you had like 50% of more of the people that utilize that option, then I think it'd be worth it. But what if only 10% do it, now you're putting 90% of the tools, you're putting something that will never be used. Yeah, I'd be interested to see one key numbers, what, like how much percentage of the tool is one key. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who's going to pay the extra cost? I, and I want to see who's buying that one key. That's the one thing, though, about Milwaukee that I'm starting to realize is that I don't think, I think a lot of manufacturers say, okay, What's the majority of the population make? That's the type of tool we're going to make. Where I feel like Milwaukee's more like, okay, what is a problem? How can we solve it? Let's do it. Even if it's only 5% of the population going to do it. So you see a lot with their M12 stuff, like with the, with the PAX tool. It's just things like that. You know, like, okay, not everyone's going to buy that tool, but there's going to be a majority that's going to really help out. So let's make it. You know? Yeah. I mean, and I think that's kind of how it is one key. Too. Yeah. I don't, you know. Just... Well, I mean, that, he's right, though, because I mean, really. Milwaukee's going to make a tool in the trades that might not be a sellable tool, might not be that popular, but they're doing it to keep that tradesman happy, to keep, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, God, what was the tool I was thinking about the other day? Not the drain auger, but there's a, there's one tool that I was like, But it oh. is funny to see a lot of other people coming out after Milwaukee does stuff, like with the packs, with the drain auger, everything like that, and everyone's like, oh, jackets. Oh man, they're doing it. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, Milwaukee it. definitely is a front runner you know? with their you know disruptive innovation. Plus, they have really good marketing. You know, I mean that's what pushes yeah, great them marketing. too. So, marketing makes America, man. It does. Yeah, think about it. What do you mean? Marketing drives everything here. Yeah, I, mean, I guess you're right. Yes. Well, we're gonna market this to you. This is how I would market this to you. You ready? Go buy this. If you don't, we're gonna come out there. We're gonna beat you in the head with it. I like it, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, if you don't want it, don't buy it. You know, yes. but if you're already into Milwaukee, you guys, definitely something cool. This was the craziest video I think we've ever done, like talking wise. No, nah, we've talked a lot about boring stuff before. Really, no, this video was pretty boring. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. No, that's cool. I apologize. I like I apologize. Do you want to go over the stats? We got the box, man. Come on, that's our go thing, ahead, right? Off the box. Here we go. Box, box reading. Three modes. 575 on one, 2000 on two, 2300 on speed three. Uh, impacts per minute, you got 450, 2900, 3200. Uh, 6.7 inches long and 5.3 pounds. And this is a three inch uh, animal that we're talking about. So, tools and action, guys. Peace out. Don't forget to follow Peace. us on Instagram. Remember, for more exciting tool action, go to toolsinaction.com.